Yeah, so we revealed today that what we've now learned, and only very recently learned, that both BCG, which is a fantastic immune stimulant, and checkpoints, which is a wonderful T cell activator, ultimately fail. And the reason it fails is because the tumor has figured out a way to avoid the activity of the T cell. BCG activates the CD8 killer T cell. Checkpoint inhibitors activates the killer T cell. But the T cell needs a receptor on the tumor in order to bind. That receptor is called MHC, MHC1 specifically, and it retracts it. It prevents the T cell from recognizing and hides. We call that tumor evasion, and as soon as that happens, the T cell is no longer active and you get a relapse. With the realization that what we've done over the course of therapy is this Darwinian clonal selection of this resistant cell of what we call MHC negative. So today we introduce this very new concept of taking an MHC1 negative cell and making back, which is a cold tumor, and making it hot again as MHC1 positive. By making it hot again, all of a sudden, the T cell receptor called MHC is re-expressed on that tumor cell and the T cells can be rescued, restored, and kill. How do we do that? Because we have a cell in our body called the natural killer cell that has been born to recognize cells that are without MHC. It's called missing self. And by so doing, that natural killer cell targets all these MHC lost cells and activates a thing called gamma interferon and stimulates back the MHC1. So the question is, what does Angtiva do? Well, Angtiva, and you can see that from the label, is a first in class next generation immunotherapy that activates NK cells reactivates, restores CD8 killer T cells, and most importantly, activates the memory T cell. And in so doing, the so-called triangle offense allows us now to kill that, those recalcitrant resistant MHC negative cell, which we now made them MHC positive. So BCG, like checkpoints, like chemotherapy, all ultimately induce an MHC negative cell. So uh, this entire field has relied on this concept of progression-free survival, which means that sadly, we as physicians, scientists, and the industry almost anticipate progression. We want to change that bar where it should be cancer-free overall survival. And what we're now seeing in our bladder cancer patients, both in the naive and the BCG unresponsive, that we actually not only have a complete remission, but a durable complete remission. So as I said, time matters, duration matters. In our naive setting, we have now patients we've been followed for up to nine years with complete remission or disease-free, depending whether it's cis or papillary, up to over eight and a half years. And in our BCG unresponsive setting, the disease-free or complete response Remission is now 47 months and ongoing. So the BCG naive study is still ongoing. Um, interestingly enough, uh, as I shared with the audience today, the FDA in response to the breakthrough designation and to try and understand the contribution of the effect of Angtiva, asked us to unblind and, and perform an interim analysis on the BCG naive results. We revealed results for the first time at this audience today, in which the complete response in the small number of patients that we unveiled, uh, uh, about uh, 43 patients in each arm, was 85%. And more importantly, by the time nine months came through, the difference in duration of response of BCG plus Angtiva versus BCG alone reached statistical significance. So we are very excited about that study because obviously we can capture patients in the BCG naive state and that study is now ongoing. We have active sites in the United States and we just opened up global sites, uh, about 20 or 37 global sites around the world so we can increase the accrual rate for that study.
Well, as you know, there's been a chronic shortage worldwide of BCG in the United States. Merck is the uh, only producer since Sanofi and the other companies stopped producing BCG. It's a difficult product to produce. Um, happily, our label is BCG without limiting it to BCG ties. So I think just yesterday, we announced our arrangement with uh, Serum Institute of India, in which they have two forms of BCG, the, the standard BCG, which is the Pasteur Institute, and a engineered BCG, which we call recombinant BCG. And we've arranged to be the exclusive global partnership where they would manufacture. They have an unlimited, I wouldn't say unlimited, but they make millions of doses and they provide that to the worldwide to WHO and around many, many countries. What's exciting to me was not just the standard BCG, which we will continue to do the studies, but the recombinant BCG, because the recombinant BCG has been engineered to enhance this, the CD8 killer T cell, the MHC1 positive CD8 killer T cells, and more importantly, in the phase one, two studies that's been completed now in Europe, in Germany and Switzerland, shown to not be highly immunogenic, but safer uh, in those studies so far than standard BCG. So the issue for us, I think we've solved at least the problem of having a BCG availability to uh, both our clinicians in the United States, um, who we will obviously be using the TICE BCG and the Anctiva as a standard of care, but we will then open a trial to compare one BCG to the other BCG.